Hello friends, today I am going to tell you a real story. And, she is one of my very close friends, and this is only a small part of her life so, I hope you guys will love the story and, also don't, forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Now let's start the story. In the quaint town of Maplewood, nestled among the rolling hills of Canada, lived a young man named Taylor. Now, Taylor wasn't your typical guy. He had a unique way of looking at life, a perspective that set him apart from his peers. And while he was content with his own thoughts, the world around him often tried to steer him onto a more conventional path. Taylor's world began to change during a conversation overheard by Aunt Agnes, his caring and sometimes overly involved guardian. The topic of discussion? A new movie, Captain Wonder. Little did Taylor know, this seemingly innocent conversation would set the stage for a series of events that would forever alter his journey. I didn't realize Emily liked movies like that, the antagonists remarked, their curiosity piqued. Oh, Emily isn't going. Taylor's friend Logan chimed in, so it's just going to be you and Logan? Aunt Agnes asked with a hint of intrigue. Yeah, I don't think he's made any friends since school isn't in session yet. And unlike Emily and the cheerleading squad, he hasn't had an opportunity yet, Taylor explained. So it's just me. Aunt Agnes seemed conflicted, placing a hand on Taylor's shoulder. Taylor, you realize what you agreed to, right? Aunt Agnes inquired, concern lacing her words. Agreed to. I'm just going to see a movie with a friend, Taylor replied, trying to downplay the situation. But Logan knows you as a girl, and while I know that it's possible to be platonic friends, given what you've said about Emily's comments. Aunt Agnes trailed off. Taylor's face dropped as realization hit him. Oh no, I agreed to go on a date with Logan. I have to cancel. That's probably wise. And Agnes offered supportively. Taylor hesitated, torn between his desire to watch the movie and his guilt about potentially canceling on Logan. But I really want to see the movie, and I'd feel bad if Logan already bought the tickets. I suppose it's up to you, the antagonist said with a knowing smile. As Taylor put his head in his hands, he couldn't help but wonder why he always managed to complicate things. The summer had brought about significant changes for him, and his morning routine had transformed into something entirely unexpected. From joining the cheerleading program to accompanying Emily on morning jogs, Taylor found himself embracing a new way of life. Over the course of these jogs, Emily had not only become his workout partner, but also his mentor in matters of beauty and self-care. Taylor's morning ritual had evolved to include specialized shampoos, conditioners, face washes, and body washes, all carefully curated by Emily to enhance his appearance. But that wasn't all. Emily insisted on a clean-shaven body, which had led Taylor to meticulously shave his skin. He had adopted a wardrobe that aligned more with Emily's sense of style, and his makeup skills had seen a rapid improvement to avoid any unsolicited makeovers from his enthusiastic friend. Taylor's life, however, took a different turn on days when cheerleading practice was on the schedule. His practice uniform, a comfortable yet feminine ensemble, spared him the daily ordeal of outfit coordination and makeup application. While he found solace in its comfort, Taylor couldn't shake the thought that he was in the midst of a whirlwind of changes that he hadn't fully signed up for. As Taylor pondered his situation, he came to a realization. He was about to test the boundaries of his newfound identity. The day of the Captain Wonder movie premiere had arrived, and Taylor found himself grappling with a mix of excitement and apprehension. He was set to watch the movie with Logan, a friend who treated him as he was, without pushing him to embrace femininity. The mirror reflected a transformed Taylor, a reflection he often didn't recognize. A cute outfit and carefully coordinated makeup adorned him, showcasing Emily's guidance in every detail. French-tipped nails adorned his fingers and toes, a testament to his recent nail salon excursion with Emily. Taylor chuckled to himself, finding solace in the fact that at least the outfit he was wearing wasn't pink, a color he had grown accustomed to thanks to Emily's influence. With his duffel bag slung over his shoulder, Taylor descended the stairs to find Aunt Agnes engaged in a nail appointment with Deb, the local nail artist. I'm off to practice. I'll be back later, Taylor announced with a wave. Have fun, Taylor, and Agnes replied warmly. Stepping outside, Taylor closed the door behind him and took a deep breath. 
As he headed towards his cheerleading practice, he couldn't help but contemplate the intricate tapestry of his life. The unexpected experiences, the evolving friendships, and the constant self-discovery had led him down a path he could never have predicted. And as Taylor walked on, the story of his unique journey continued to unfold, a tale filled with self-discovery, friendship, and the challenges of embracing one's identity in a world that often sought to define it for you. As Aunt Agnes continued her conversation with Deb about what she had just witnessed, the atmosphere was filled with curiosity and a sense of intrigue. It was evident that something significant had transpired, and Aunt Agnes was about to share the story behind it. It's a long story, Aunt Agnes began, her expression a mix of amusement and nostalgia, but let's save that tale for another time. Meanwhile, on the cheerleading field, the afternoon sun was starting to cast long shadows as practice came to an end. Taylor, Dana, Zoe, and Marie huddled together, discussing the upcoming school year and their hopes for the classes they would be assigned. I really hope I don't end up getting Mrs. Wojowski again. She's such a hard ass, Marie complained, a hint of exasperation in her voice. Is it too much to hope that she retired over the summer? Dana chimed in, earning a chuckle from the group. As the girls chatted, their attention was abruptly drawn to a sharp whistle that pierced the air. Turning towards the source of the sound, they saw Coach Roberts standing near one of the football goalposts, motioning for Taylor to approach. Taylor, can I speak with you a moment? Coach Roberts called out. With a curious glance exchanged among the girls, Taylor quickly finished packing his bag and made his way over to Coach Roberts. A mixture of thoughts raced through his mind, wondering if he was in trouble or if something unexpected was about to unfold. What's wrong, Coach? Taylor inquired, a touch of concern in his voice. Nothing's wrong, Taylor. I just wanted to let you know how impressed I am with you. Coach Roberts began, a warm smile on her face. I mean, coming from being a complete beginner and showing the improvement you've demonstrated in just a few weeks. It's incredible. Taylor's eyes widened in surprise, absorbing the unexpected praise. Thank you, coach. I appreciate that. Coach Roberts continued, I've only ever had a few girls who picked up cheerleading this quickly. I think you've got a future in it. Taylor's heart raced as Coach Roberts' words sank in. The idea of pursuing cheerleading beyond the summer hadn't even crossed his mind. He found himself both flattered and conflicted by the thought. Actually, coach, I'm just here for the summer. I'm headed back home when it's over. Taylor explained, grappling with the idea of a future in cheerleading. Coach Roberts nodded, understanding Taylor's position. Well, I encourage you to think about it. Joining a team back home could be a great opportunity. It looks impressive on college applications and might even lead to scholarships. I'll definitely consider it, Taylor replied with a thoughtful expression, his mind now open to the possibility. With their conversation concluded, Taylor bid Coach Roberts farewell and headed back to his friends. A sense of both excitement and uncertainty filled his thoughts as he rejoined Emily and the girls. As he recounted the conversation, Emily grinned and said, It's not a bad idea to consider. Plus, you're really good at it. Dana chimed in, You're one of the most graceful cheerleaders I've ever seen, and most newbies are still tripping over their own feet at this point. Blushing at the unexpected compliments, Taylor found himself in a surreal position. He was excelling at an activity he hadn't imagined he would be good at, an activity that seemed to challenge the very perceptions he held about himself. As practice wrapped up, Taylor and Emily said their goodbyes to the girls, feeling a sense of camaraderie that had grown over the summer. Walking back to the car, their conversation shifted to the day's events and the newfound possibilities that had opened up. And as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm golden hue over Maplewood, the journey of Taylor's summer continued to unfold, filled with unexpected twists and the promise of self-discovery. As the car rolled along the familiar streets of Maplewood, Emily took the opportunity to engage Taylor in a conversation about the upcoming movie. She was particularly interested in what he intended to wear to the event, prying into the details of his outfit choice. I don't know, probably a t-shirt and shorts. It's a superhero movie, not a French restaurant, Taylor replied, trying to keep his response casual. That's no excuse not to look your best, especially if you want Logan to notice. Emily retorted playfully, her determination evident. I don't, Taylor emphasized, but Emily's playful smile only grew. Sure you don't, 
Emily giggled, her tone implying that she saw through Taylor's assertion. Rolling his eyes, Taylor could only shake his head at Emily's persistence. Her imagination seemed to have a habit of running wild with the idea of him and Logan as a couple a concept that he dismissed outright. After arriving home, Emily wasted no time. Once she finished her shower, she headed straight to Taylor's house. Bursting with energy, she was determined to assist him in choosing the perfect outfit for the movie. I've got to leave for my hair appointment soon, but I want to help you pick an outfit out. Let's see. Emily began, enthusiastically rummaging through Taylor's closet. I think I can handle dressing myself. You've seen what I've picked over the past week, right? Taylor quipped, his tone light but a touch exasperated. Yeah, but this is special. Besides, I've seen every girl my brother dated. I know exactly how to impress him. Emily replied with a mischievous grin. Taylor's protests fell on deaf ears, as Emily was on a mission to ensure that he looked his best. The idea of her big brother being interested in her best friend was something she was clearly determined to explore. Several hours later, Emily was off to her hair appointment, and Taylor was left to put the finishing touches on his chosen outfit. He had given in to Emily's choice of a skirt, the initial embarrassment of wearing it having faded away over the weeks. He knew that she had a way of involving Logan in her decisions, so he couldn't shake the thought that Logan might have seen the outfit beforehand. As he adjusted the skirt, Taylor couldn't help but cringe at his reflection. He looked like the cute, nerdy girl he had often daydreamed about dating. He mused to himself that it was just a movie and reminded himself to relax. With a purse in hand, a necessity given the skirt's lack of pockets, Taylor bid on Agnes farewell and stepped outside to find Logan waiting in the car. A sense of relief washed over him as he saw that Logan was dressed casually in a hoodie, a clear sign that he saw this movie outing as nothing more than two friends catching a film. Carefully getting into the car to avoid any wardrobe mishaps, Taylor greeted Logan with a smile. As they pulled away, Logan couldn't contain his excitement about the movie. I'm so excited for the movie. It looks like it's gonna be awesome, Logan exclaimed, his enthusiasm infectious. I know, right? When they released the teaser back at Comic-Con, I was so pumped, Taylor replied, feeling a genuine spark of excitement despite his internal reservations. And as the car continued on its way, the two friends shared a moment of anticipation, their shared interest in the movie bridging the gap between them. Little did Taylor know that this movie outing would mark a turning point in his summer, leading to unexpected conversations, personal revelations, and a deeper connection with Logan, all woven into the fabric of a tale that was as unique as the characters themselves. I'm just glad we're seeing it before all the spoilers are all over the internet, Logan remarked with a grin, his excitement evident. Absolutely. I had the last Justice Sentinels movie spoiled for me, and it sucked. Taylor whined, the memory of the disappointment still fresh in his mind. The conversation flowed as Logan expertly navigated the streets to the multiplex. Parking the car, the two friends made their way towards their designated theater. Logan had a plan to save their seats, and upon his return, he triumphantly carried snacks and drinks, a soda each and a large popcorn to share. The pragmatic choice of sharing a large popcorn over two mediums was a testament to their friendship. With the previews behind them, the film began with a captivating narration and an epic superhero fight on the screen. Taylor found himself engrossed in the cinematic experience, momentarily setting aside thoughts of his appearance and his company. The movie had a way of transporting him into a world of fantasy and adventure. As the film played out its thrilling scenes, Taylor felt a sense of gratitude for experiencing it on the big screen rather than waiting for a digital release. The fact that Emily and Logan had moved across the street had opened doors to shared experiences that Taylor might not have otherwise pursued. However, around 20 minutes into the movie, Taylor's enjoyment was interrupted by an unforeseen issue he began to shiver. Despite his initial confidence in his chosen outfit of a skirt and t-shirt, the reality hit him that the air conditioning in the theater was turned up high and his attire was not well suited for the chill. Logan, ever observant, noticed Taylor's discomfort and acted swiftly. Handing Taylor the large popcorn tub, he whispered, hold this. I figured it might be chilly. In an act of generosity, Logan unzipped his hoodie and draped it over Taylor's shoulders, offering warmth and comfort. 
The hoodie, a symbol of masculine attire, was a stark contrast to Taylor's current outfit. But in that moment, practicality took precedence over appearances. Grateful for the added warmth and familiar clothing, Taylor pulled the hoodie over his arms and zipped it up. A sigh of relief escaped him as he felt the cozy embrace of the hoodie. The relief wasn't solely from the cold, it was the comfort of being himself, unburdened by the expectation to dress a certain way. Thanks, Taylor whispered, a genuine smile tugging at the corners of his lips. No problem, Logan replied with a warm smile of his own, their whispered exchange a testament to the unspoken connection between them. As the movie continued, there were occasional moments of embarrassment for Taylor. Accidental brushes of their hands sparked a small nervous giggle and a flush of blush on Taylor's cheeks. Logan's smile in response was a silent acknowledgement of their friendship's evolving dynamics. In that dimly lit theater, as the story of heroes and villains unfolded on the screen, another story was taking shape one of camaraderie, shared moments, and a deepening bond between Taylor and Logan. Amid the flashing lights and booming sound effects, their unscripted journey continued to weave its way into a tale that was both unexpected and extraordinary. Amid the exhilarating scenes of the movie, an unexpected turn of events shifted Taylor's focus. As Taylor was engrossed in the film's climactic moment, Logan's arm found its way around Taylor's shoulder. It was a move that caught Taylor off guard, causing him to freeze in place. He was acutely aware of the situation, the weight of Logan's arm, the warm feeling that enveloped him, and the potential implications of this simple action. Taylor's initial instinct was to pull away, to maintain a sense of normalcy, and avoid drawing attention in the middle of the theater. However, as the scene unfolded on the screen, he found himself torn between wanting to remove himself from the situation and not wanting to miss a single second of the intense action. The warmth of Logan's hoodie, combined with the gentle reassurance of his arm, created an oddly comforting sensation. As the hero on the screen engaged in a spectacular action sequence, Taylor's initial discomfort began to fade. He pumped his fist in excitement as the hero delivered a powerful blow to the villain, caught up in the thrill of the moment. Logan's chuckle, prompted by Taylor's enthusiastic response, snapped him out of his reverie. The two friends shared a genuine moment of shared amusement, a harmonious giggle passing between them. Lost in the moment, Taylor barely registered Logan's movement until he realized that Logan was shifting his face closer to Taylor's. Thinking that Logan was about to ask him a question, Taylor instinctively turned his head. However, he was caught completely off guard as Logan's intent became clear. He was going in for a kiss. Taylor's mind raced, grappling with a whirlwind of feelings and questions. Did this mean that Emily and Aunt Agnes were right all along, and this outing was indeed a date? Had Taylor unintentionally given Logan the impression that he wanted more than friendship? The questions raced through his mind as Logan's lips met his, the world around them seemingly fading away. Taylor's heart raced, his mind racing to process the suddenness of the situation. The kiss continued, leaving Taylor too surprised to react, too shocked to pull away. It was as if time stood still, and in that suspended moment, Taylor's emotions collided, leaving him disoriented and uncertain. The explosion on the movie screen finally jolted Taylor back to reality. The action-packed spectacle was a stark contrast to the emotional whirlwind he had just experienced. Logan pulled away, a warm smile adorning his face as Taylor's cheeks burned with embarrassment. Sinking into his seat, Taylor wished he could disappear into it, hoping that the upholstery would swallow him whole. The theater around them returned to the movie's captivating world, completely unaware of the internal storm that had unfolded in the space between Taylor and Logan. As the movie played on, Taylor's mind raced, grappling with the implications of what had just transpired. The tale of unexpected romance had woven its threads into their story, leaving both Taylor and Logan with a moment that was as profound as it was surprising, a moment that would forever change the dynamics of their friendship and set their narrative on a new and uncharted course. The movie had come to an end, and as the credits rolled, Taylor and Logan made their way towards the restroom. Taylor, feeling a mix of emotions after the unexpected kiss, found himself using the women's restroom for the first time. In a moment of contemplation, he considered rinsing his mouth out in the sink to rid himself of the lingering taste. 
Ultimately, he decided against it, aware that the idea of doing so in a public sink was far less appealing than the discomfort he felt after the kiss itself. The bathroom was crowded, and it took considerably longer than usual to navigate through the stalls and complete his tasks. Emerging from the restroom, Taylor found Logan waiting by some posters advertising upcoming films. He offered an explanation for his extended absence, apologizing for the delay. Hey, sorry I took so long. It was super crowded in there, Taylor explained. No worries, Logan replied, his demeanor a mix of understanding and concern. He then broached the subject of the kiss, expressing a heartfelt sentiment. Listen, I'm sorry if the kiss made things weird. It just seemed like the thing to do at the time, Logan admitted, his hands fidgeting as he spoke. Taylor felt a twinge of guilt, sensing that Logan might be feeling uneasy about the situation. He didn't want Logan to blame himself for the unexpected turn of events. Taylor understood that Logan's actions had stemmed from a moment of spontaneity rather than any ill intent. It's not that, it's just that, well, I'm going to be going home soon, Taylor began, his voice conveying a mix of emotions. Logan's face fell as he grasped the implication. I get it. We'll probably never see each other again. Yeah, Taylor responded, a hint of sadness tinging his voice. The complex feelings that welled up within him were hard to decipher. Was his sadness for Emily, for Logan, or for his own predicament? The emotions remained tangled and elusive. With a comforting hand on Taylor's shoulder, Logan offered a supportive gesture. He began to walk towards the theater's exit, the weight of the situation clearly visible in his expression. Once back home, Taylor greeted Aunt Agnes before heading upstairs to his room. Emily's probing texts were waiting for him, but Taylor chose to ignore them, needing space and time to process the whirlwind of emotions that had transpired. Lying in bed, Taylor slowly peeled off the skirt and bra, a symbolic shedding of the external trappings that had contributed to the day's events. Clad in just a pair of panties, he settled beneath the covers, seeking solace in the quiet of his thoughts. Sleep called to him, offering a temporary escape from the complex web of feelings and uncertainties that had come to define this particular chapter of his summer tale. As Taylor's eyes closed, his mind drifted, weaving dreams and contemplations into a narrative that was uniquely his own. And so, much like the night following the initial prank orchestrated by Emily, Taylor succumbed to sleep, his mind finally finding respite in dreams, yearning for the day he could leave the roller coaster of summer behind and return to the comfort of his familiar life. As the following morning dawned, a Saturday stretching ahead, Taylor's slumber was gently interrupted by a soft knock on his bedroom door. He stirred and sat up, greeted by the sight of Aunt Agnes waiting just outside. Is something wrong? Taylor inquired, rubbing the sleep from his eyes. I was about to ask you the same thing. Emily hasn't come by yet and I got worried. Aunt Agnes explained, her concern evident. Confused by the situation, Taylor reached for his phone and was startled to realize that it was nearly noon. He marveled at the fact that Emily had let him sleep in, considering her usual early morning visits. Did you two have a fight? Aunt Agnes probed gently. No, Taylor replied, stifling a yawn. I haven't spoken to her since she went to get her hair done yesterday. Antagonist, still standing by the door, inquired further. Did something happen with Logan at the movies? I noticed you weren't too eager to chat when you got home. Taylor hesitated before opening up, his emotions still a whirlwind. Sort of. Logan, he kissed me. Aunt Agnes entered the room and took a seat on the bed beside Taylor, absorbing the information. Oh my, yeah. Taylor sighed, his uncertainty palpable. I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about it. Antagonist pressed, did you like it? No, Taylor admitted honestly. So there you go, Aunt Agnes reassured, attempting to simplify the situation. But I still kissed a boy. Taylor's voice was tinged with a mixture of confusion and self-doubt. Aunt Agnes placed a comforting hand on Taylor's shoulder, offering a supportive smile. Trust me, Taylor, when you've been around as long as I have, boy or girl, you're going to have some kisses you regret. Taylor grappled with the question that had been gnawing at him. Doesn't it make me gay? Aunt Agnes shook her head, her tone gentle and understanding. If you didn't enjoy it, it means that, at the very least, you're not attracted to Logan, so I'd say no. But even if you are gay, that's not a bad thing. Taylor's thoughts were in turmoil, and he couldn't help but express his frustrations. I guess this summer has been a disaster. Aunt Agnes offered perspective, acknowledging her own role in the events that had unfolded. I know, 
and I take a good chunk of the responsibility for that. Although, it's not like you made it any easier on yourself. You had a few outs that you didn't use, and you really let Emily walk all over you. Her words struck a chord, prompting Taylor to reflect on his choices. You've got to learn to put your foot down with people like her. Antagonist chimed in with her own insights, offering guidance based on Taylor's experiences. How did you get along at home? Taylor's response was tinged with nostalgia for a simpler time. At home, it was different. When I'm me, I know what I like and what I don't. I didn't have to be constantly worried that someone would figure out who I really was. I guess I was just taking the path of least resistance and hoping that if I just skated through, the summer would end and I could return to normal. The conversation, laden with self-discovery and introspection, continued to weave its way into Taylor's narrative. As the past clashed with the present, Taylor grappled with the complexities of identity, friendship, and the journey to find one's place in the world. The threads of his story intertwined, forming a tapestry that was uniquely his, a story of growth, introspection, and the pursuit of authenticity. The challenges ahead were clear, and Taylor acknowledged that distancing himself from Emily wasn't going to be a simple task. As Antagonist pointed out, Emily's persistence wouldn't just fade away, and Taylor would need to make some decisions about how to navigate their friendship. The prospect of ongoing contact with Emily brought a mix of apprehension and discomfort. It's going to be tough. I mean, Emily's not just going to stop texting or emailing you or whatever it is you kids do. Are you going to keep an outfit and makeup to keep her at bay when you leave, or are you going to drop all contact? Because if you think I'll put up with her hounding me for the rest of my life, I'm just going to tell her where you live and let you figure it out," Antagonist remarked, her tone laced with amusement. Taylor mumbled a response, recognizing that he hadn't thought that far ahead. Both he and Antagonist had been caught up in the whirlwind of events, dealing with the challenges as they came. Antagonist offered a sympathetic chuckle, summarizing their shared predicament. The anthem of this summer for both of us. As Taylor embarked on a plan to address the situation, he headed for Emily's house after a shower, choosing an outfit that leaned towards her preferences, a cute ensemble consisting of capris and a scoop neck tee. His intent was to clear the air with Emily, and he reasoned that minimizing any potential conflict by wearing an outfit Emily would approve of might be a wise choice. He crossed the street, the sound of his flip-flops against the pavement echoing his steps. As he approached Emily on the porch, she greeted him enthusiastically. Hey bestie, their conversation began with a light-hearted exchange about the movie, and Emily explained that she hadn't visited earlier because she'd heard from Logan that Taylor had seemed a bit off after the movie. Taylor's expression grew serious as he broached the topic he needed to discuss. He kissed me. Emily's immediate reaction was excitement, but she quickly picked up on Taylor's demeanor and shifted her tone. That's great, she said hesitantly, then noticed Taylor's serious expression. Isn't it? No, Taylor admitted, his voice heavy with his inner turmoil. He felt compelled to finally express his feelings on the matter. I've been trying to tell you. I like Logan as a friend. I don't want to date him. But I thought. Emily began, her confusion evident. That's exactly it. You never really gave me a chance to explain. You were practically planning our wedding, Taylor said, his frustration with the situation evident. Emily paused, taking in Taylor's words. She then offered a suggestion. That's something you've got to tell him yourself. Taylor nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. I know. After their conversation, Taylor decided it was time to talk to Logan. Knocking on Logan's door, he was initially met with silence, but his persistence paid off as Logan eventually noticed his presence. The two engaged in a conversation that held both nervousness and relief. Hey, what's up, Taylor? Logan asked, his tone casual. As Taylor opened up about his feelings, a weight lifted off his shoulders. I only want to be friends. Logan's response was understanding. I figured as much after the kiss. I probably should have figured that way earlier. Taylor explained how Emily's influence had played a role in the misunderstandings. Emily has a way of only saying what she wants you to hear. She told you things about me, nothing major, just hinting. Logan recognized Emily's tendency to manipulate situations, realizing how it might have affected Taylor's perspective. I'm sure she did the same to you, needling about looks or something I said in passing that she pounced on. 
Taylor reassured Logan about his feelings. I do like you, but I'm happy to just be friends. I'm so glad. I really didn't want to be leading you on. Relief washed over Taylor as Logan expressed his understanding. No worries. Their conversation took a lighter turn, with Taylor even injecting a touch of humor. Besides, I don't think long distance would have worked out. When would we have ever talked? The resolution between Taylor and Logan marked a turning point in the summer's narrative. Taylor's confrontation of his own feelings and honest communication with those around him set the stage for growth, clarity, and newfound connections. As the story progressed, the threads of Taylor's journey were woven into a tapestry of self-discovery, acceptance, and the realization that paths may be uncertain, but each step taken brings us closer to our true selves. Taylor listened as his father explained the situation, realizing that their plans had taken an unexpected turn due to the promotion and the temporary work assignment abroad. The news stirred a mix of emotions within him, a blend of disappointment and understanding. Wow, a promotion is great, Taylor said, masking the disappointment he felt about the extension of his stay. But what does that mean for me? Taylor's father continued, addressing Taylor's concerns. We think it's best for you to stay with Aunt Agnes until we're back. It's only a few more months, and it'll be an opportunity for you to spend more time with her and continue with your summer activities. Taylor sighed inwardly, trying to find the silver lining in the situation. I get it. It's just, I miss home. I know it's not what we initially planned, and we're sorry for the change in plans, but we'll make it up to you his father assured him. Taylor's mother chimed in, her voice gentle, and we'll be sure to visit you during the assignment, maybe even explore the country together. Taylor nodded, a mix of emotions still swirling within him. Okay, I understand. I'll stay here with Aunt Agnes. Thank you for being understanding, Taylor, his father said appreciatively. We promise we'll make this up to you once we're back. As the call ended, Taylor sat in a mix of emotions. While he missed the familiarity of home and the routine he was used to, he knew that he could make the most of the remaining time with Aunt Agnes and the friends he had made over the summer. Over the next few weeks, Taylor settled into a routine that included morning runs with Emily, spending time with Aunt Agnes, and even occasional video game sessions with Logan. The initial awkwardness between Taylor and Emily had dissipated, replaced by a newfound understanding and respect for each other's boundaries. Their friendship had evolved, and Taylor was grateful for the chance to rebuild it on more equal terms. As summer slowly turned to fall, Taylor found solace in the familiar and the new. He continued to explore his interests and make connections, knowing that the time he spent in this unfamiliar town had changed him in unexpected ways. The challenges he faced, the friendships he forged, and the lessons he learned became an integral part of his story, shaping him into a more self-assured and resilient individual. As the final weeks of Taylor's extended stay approached, he reflected on the journey he had embarked upon. From the boy who reluctantly agreed to cross-dressing and makeup transformations, to the young person who faced his feelings and communicated honestly with those around him, Taylor had come a long way. The summer had transformed him, not just in his outward appearance, but in the way he approached life and relationships. With autumn leaves falling and the promise of change in the air, Taylor looked ahead to his return home, carrying with him the memories, lessons, and friendships that had enriched his unique summer tale. As he grappled with the unexpected turn of events, Taylor's mind raced, thoughts colliding with emotions as he tried to process what this scholarship offer meant for his immediate future. The promise of a new school, new people, and the continuation of a persona he never intended to embrace weighed heavily on him. Aunt Agnes sat beside Taylor, her presence a comforting anchor in the midst of his turmoil. Taylor, I know this is a lot to take in, but remember, life has a way of throwing us curveballs. It's how we handle those curveballs that define our journey. Taylor glanced up at Aunt Agnes, his eyes still moist with unshed tears. But what if I can't keep up the act? What if people find out the truth? Aunt Agnes placed a reassuring hand on his back. You've already shown tremendous strength and adaptability this summer. While it's true that keeping up appearances might be challenging, it's also an opportunity for growth. And remember, you're not alone in this. Taylor nodded a mix of uncertainty and determination within him. I guess I'll have to find a way to navigate this. I just wish I had a clear path forward. That's the thing about paths, Taylor, Aunt Agnes said with a gentle smile. They're rarely clear, 
but they're always full of potential. Embrace the challenges, learn from them, and keep true to yourself along the way. As the fall semester at Summit Academy began, Taylor found himself facing a new reality. He donned his uniform, complete with skirt and makeup, and joined the student body as a seemingly confident and outgoing cheerleader. The familiar nerves of the first day of school were amplified by the weight of his secret and the web of relationships he had woven over the summer. Vicky, the principal, welcomed Taylor warmly and introduced him to a few classmates. He tried his best to be friendly, to fit in, and to maintain the persona he had created during the summer. But as the days passed, Taylor realized that the act was taking its toll on him. He missed the simplicity of being himself, of not having to constantly monitor his every move and word. During a lunch break, Taylor found a quiet corner of the courtyard and took a deep breath. He dialed Emily's number, needing to confide in someone who understood the struggle he was facing. Hey Taylor, how's the new school? Emily's cheerful voice greeted him. Taylor let out a sigh. Emily, I need to tell you something. This scholarship, the new school, it's not what it seems. There was a pause on the other end. What do you mean? I'm not really a girl. Taylor confessed, his voice laden with both relief and apprehension. This whole summer, the cheerleading, the outfits, the makeup, it was all a misunderstanding. I was just trying to make the best of a situation, and it got out of hand. There was a silence that stretched between them, and Taylor's heart pounded in his chest. Emily, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Emily finally replied. I can't say I'm not surprised, but I'm glad you told me. So, what are you going to do now? I don't know. Taylor admitted, feeling a weight lift off his shoulders. I just don't want to keep pretending, you know? It's exhausting. I get it, Emily said. Listen, Taylor, no matter what, I'll support you. We'll figure this out together. As Taylor hung up the phone, a sense of renewed determination filled him. With Emily's support and his newfound resolve to be true to himself, he knew he had a tough journey ahead. Navigating the complexities of high school, friendships, and the expectations he had inadvertently created would be a challenge. But Taylor was ready to face it, armed with honesty, resilience, and the knowledge that the path ahead was his to shape. And so Taylor's story continued, marked by twists, turns, and unexpected revelations. As the seasons changed, he embarked on a journey of authenticity, self-discovery, and personal growth. With each step, he moved closer to finding his place in the world and embracing the person he was meant to be. The halls of Summit Academy buzzed with activity as students navigated between classes, chatted in groups, and hurriedly swapped textbooks. Taylor moved through the throng, his heart pounding with a mixture of nervousness and determination. Today was the day he had decided to come clean to Vicky, the principal, and his classmates about his true identity. As he stood outside Vicky's office, Taylor took a deep breath and knocked on the door. Come in, came Vicky's warm voice. Taylor entered, his palms slightly sweaty. Vicky looked up from her desk, her friendly smile welcoming him. Taylor, how can I help you today? I need to talk to you about something important. Taylor began, his voice steadier than he had anticipated. I've been pretending to be someone I'm not ever since I came here. Vicky's eyebrows furrowed, and she motioned for him to sit. Go on, Taylor. I'm listening. Taylor took a deep breath and began to explain. He recounted the circumstances that led to the misunderstanding, the scholarship offer, and how he had unintentionally found himself caught up in a false persona. Vicky listened attentively, her expression a mix of surprise and understanding. I appreciate your honesty, Taylor. Vicky said after he had finished. It takes courage to admit when we've made a mistake, especially one that led to such a complex situation. I know that I messed up and I'm sorry for that, Taylor said earnestly. I just want to be myself and not have to pretend anymore. Vicky nodded. Taylor, authenticity is important, and I'm glad you've decided to be honest about who you are. As for the scholarship, let me speak to the board. I believe we can work something out. Taylor felt a sense of relief wash over him. Vicky's understanding response gave him hope that he could navigate this challenging situation with integrity. Later that day, Taylor found himself in front of his classmates during a school assembly. His heart raced as he took a deep breath and stepped onto the stage. All eyes were on him, and he knew that this was his moment to come clean. Hey everyone, 
Taylor began, his voice carrying a mix of nervousness and determination. I want to talk to you about something important. I know some of you may have noticed that I've been different since I came to Summit Academy. He proceeded to share his story, explaining the misunderstanding, the scholarship, and the persona he had adopted. He spoke openly about the challenges he had faced in trying to maintain an image that didn't align with his true self. I want you all to know that I'm not here to deceive anyone, Taylor continued, his voice growing stronger. I'm here to be true to myself, and I'm sorry for any confusion I may have caused. Starting today, I'm embracing who I am, and I hope you can understand and support me. The room was filled with a mix of surprised expressions, thoughtful nods, and supportive smiles. Taylor's courage in sharing his truth resonated with many, reminding them that authenticity was worth pursuing. As the weeks went by, Taylor's journey of self-discovery continued. With Vicky's help, he transitioned into a scholarship that aligned with his interests and aspirations. The support he received from his classmates surprised him. Many were empathetic and kind, while others opened up about their own struggles with identity and self self-acceptance. Taylor's relationship with Emily deepened as they navigated the challenges together, strengthening their bond as true friends. And while there were moments of uncertainty and awkwardness, Taylor found that the path to authenticity was paved with personal growth, meaningful connections, and a newfound sense of empowerment. As the school year progressed, Taylor realized that his desire to be a storyteller didn't have to be limited to words on a page. His own journey, filled with twists, challenges, and unexpected turns, was a story worth sharing, a tale of embracing who he was, learning from his mistakes, and finding the courage to be genuine in a world that often demanded conformity. And so, Taylor's story continued to unfold, marked by triumphs and setbacks, but always guided by the unwavering pursuit of a life lived authentically and with purpose. As he faced the future, he knew that the narrative he was crafting was uniquely his own, and he was determined to make it a story worth telling.